Member for Lindsay. Thank you, Deputy Speaker. I rise today to speak in support of the Tax Laws Amendment Small Business Restructure Rollover Bill 2016. Deputy Speaker, in my maiden speech, I spoke a quote from Winston Churchill that some see private enterprise as a predatory tiger to be shot, others as a cow to be milked, but few are those that see it the sturdy horse pulling the wagon. Deputy Speaker, small business is just that. It is a sturdy horse pulling the wagon. You know, Deputy Speaker, all small businesses, all businesses in fact, were small once. If you look back the history of businesses, you'll always find at the heart, once upon a time, in the generations that pass, an entrepreneur with a vision. Be it somebody like Steve Jobs, your Bill Gates or even your Richard Bransons. That's the thing about small business. They start small. They grow into, some will grow into multinational enterprises. Some will be one-man sole traders. But businesses to become large, they need to start somewhere. Deputy Speaker, this bill will enable Australian small businesses to be able to change their legal structure without attracting a capital gains tax liability at that time. Deputy Speaker, if we want small business to grow into medium businesses or larger businesses, go from a sole trader into employing that second person, that third person, that fourth person, that fifth person, at some point in time the structures that were appropriate when it was a sole trader may be different when it's two or three or four employees or the structure changes with, with family lives as, as things happen. Deputy Speaker, that is why this is a good bill. That is why this is a bill that is good for small business. We need more entrepreneurs, more entrepreneurs that will take risks, more entrepreneurs that will innovate. In Australia, small businesses account for 97 per cent of all businesses. In the elect electorate of Lindsay, Gay Hawthorne, who runs the CBD Corporation, reports that there are close to 1,100 businesses in Penrith alone. Add on top to that other major centres like St Mary's, Kingswood, Emu Plains and, of course, Glenmore Park. Across Lindsay electorate, there are 12,000 businesses in according to the Penrith City Council economic profile. Businesses currently employ 70,000 people across the Penrith local government area. By 2031, that will grow to 120,000. Deputy Speaker, it is crucial that in the outskirts of Sydney, places like Western Sydney, we are working with small business leaders. We are working with business to not hinder them, but to help them get to their feet. Because by 2031, it is expected to grow that we will have over 120,000 small businesses in the Penrith region. We are attracting small businesses and entrepreneurs through a very modern approach. But we are looking to work with many partners like Deloitte, like the Western Sydney University, in the construction of what will be an innovation corridor. This is a smart tech, smart high tech corridor that will have many great organisations and more particular, in particular some really brilliant ideas. Places like the Sydney Science Park that will be home to 10,000 research positions, 12,000 uh, jobs in biotech and technology, and of course the Sydney IQ facility at Warrington. Now, one of the things I find really exciting about the Sydney IQ site is the launch pad that Western Sydney Uni has inside the uh, first building there. Now, what's exciting about launch pad? It's in the vein of your fish burners. It's the organisation of bringing together young, smart entrepreneurs so that they can work together, feed off each other, come up with new technology, come up with new ideas. And in this collaborative space, just like you see in fish burners, they're coming up with ideas for tomorrow. When we look at some of the biggest entrepreneurs and the biggest businesses of today, like your Microsofts or your Facebooks or any of those organisations, a lot of it started with a young, innovative guy thinking about how they could break, break the ceilings, break, break new boundaries. And that's what's really exciting about Launchpad. We are also working with Penrith City Council to build a commerce and education precinct, a health precinct, and of course a justice precinct. 
According to the Penrith CBD Corporation, this legislation can represent real cost savings up front for those small medium enterprises requiring a change in their business structure. Due diligence and professional advice by the business owner should always be undertaken to ensure the pathway is suitable. But the CBD Corporation goes further in saying that they are supportive in this case with the positive direction of the federal government in the realm of small business enterprise. This bill will reduce risk and complexity and make it easier for businesses to grow by allowing small businesses to change the legal structure of their business and to have the capital gains liability disregarded and deferred until eventual disposal. Sometimes a small business will start operating within a legal structure that is not necessarily best suited to the owner's needs. This can occur because they did not receive advice or the advice was inadequate or because the business has developed beyond the original aspirations of the owners. In my own family's business, my grandfather started our business in 1936 and of course as the business passed through the generations, the needs through the generations also changed. I know in my own family's business it was quite a challenge for my dad to then upgrade or update uh, the legal requirements of the business because of some of these hurdles. That's why this is a very, very good measure. For small business owners who find that they are running a business through the wrong entity structure, there can be additional administrative burdens and cash flow impediments. This bill has, cost, has a cost to revenue of over $40 million in the forward estimates period and, along with other tax measures announced in last year's budget, will provide over $5 billion of support to Australia's hard-working small business owners. This is another example of the Coalition Government reducing the burden of unnecessary red tape on small business and aligns with the findings of the Board of the Tax Review of impediments facing small business. The Coalition Government is creating the right conditions for Australian small businesses to thrive, encouraging employers to create new jobs and to make a continued significant contribution to the economic well-being of our nation. Mr Deputy Speaker, I commend this bill and I commend the work that the government is doing to help small business, to encourage small business. Because the importance of small business also, in particularly outskirts and places like Lindsay, is that two-thirds of my workforce have to compute every single day for their jobs. Now, small business is the key employer in, in places like Western Sydney. That's why we need small business to be nimble. That's why we need small business to innovate and to create. We need small business owners to, to not see a ceiling. We need them to blast through that ceiling and to create some wonderful businesses. I look across my area and I look at some of the, the businesses and entrepreneurs that have been so successful. People like Jim Aitken, who, when he was a young man, actually pumped petrol for my grandfather. He then started a business called Jim's Bins and now he has multiple uh, real estate businesses right across Penrith and the Blue Mountains. These are the sort of people who are now employing masses of, of other people and moving our community along. People like the Campbells who created Clarendon Homes. Clarendon Homes has been one of the bigger housing construction build businesses across, across the Sydney Basin. Once again, started in Penrith from just a family. Another person who's been quite successful has been Tony Ferguson. I mean, a lot of people have tried the Tony Ferguson weight loss program. Well, Tony Ferguson started as a small chemist on High Street, Penrith, and from there he had a, a, an inspiration that through pharmacy and through his knowledge of health, that it wasn't just about putting out some shakes and things like that. What Tony wanted to do was work with people in a holistic sense. He grew far beyond his chemist on High Street, Penrith. The other great thing about Tony was he was one of the very first people to bring in late night trading for his chemist. These are the sorts of things that we need to look at. Now, when I talk to people like your Tony Ferguson's and, and different uh, small business owners in my region, there are concerns about the generational planning of when is the next generation taking over and what will the ownership structures of that necessarily be. 
when you have divorces in the family or in my own family both my, my father and his business partner my grand uh, my uncle had divorced and my grandmother was a one-third share so you had a share between my grandmother and my dad and his brother so when my grandmother passed on obviously that's going to affect the business structure with my dad and my uncle they both had divorces that was also going to affect the business structure that's why these measures are so important for the 50 employees that my dad had in his business, they need to know certainty. They don't need their job impinged by changes in families. They need to know that their jobs are secure and the business is going to be able to continue on. There are a lot of measures in this bill that I think are really good, and I think for small business to be able to have the nimble-footed uh, needs to be able to change their business structure without so many hurdles for innovative businesses that are starting with products today that that will change over the future so their business models can grow. If we want to see small business incubators, places like Fishburners or the launch pad out in Western Sydney, we need to ensure that those small business entrepreneurs can take their vision, take their dream, get to their feet. And when they go to the point of getting their own premises or bring that first employee in, we need to ensure that we don't get in their way. Deputy Speaker, as I said in the beginning, in the quote of Sir Winston Churchill, small business is truly a cart, a horse pulling a cart, a sturdy horse. We may see shooting star stars of wonderful entrepreneurs with brilliant ideas, but if we try to hold them back, if we try to milk them, if we try to keep them down, they will never really reach the stars. If we actually help them, at the end of the day, it will mean more jobs for more Australians. That is why I support this bill. Thank you. I thank the member for